Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Marvel Podcast. And today we have got a really interesting guest on. We have got Lewis Jones. Lewis comes on today and he's going to be talking about anabolic steroids and the abuse that he done when he was actually younger. It's also about sending out a message to the younger generation in the world about that it messed them up mentally and physically and also how much greener the grass is when you come off them and how well he's doing to this day. But we also do dive into him being a bouncer slash storming and what the nightlife is like in Liverpool. We really feel like this is a really good educational podcast, to say the least, today. And it's got a lot of messages and a lot of good things that you can take away from this one. So we hope that you do sit down, you enjoy it, especially if you are into the gym and you do want to do bodybuilding, this will really stand out to you guys. So enjoy the episode and thank you very much for coming back. First of all, how are we? Honest, thank you for having me. No worries, lad. It, yeah. Consider it yeah. <laughs> 10 to 9 in the morning. Do you know this is the earliest podcast we've ever done? Yeah, and I'm feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so what have you been up to lately anyway and all that? So basically I work on the doors as a bouncer. Um, I've been doing that for quite some time now. I've been, yeah. say like three, for three years now. It's flown. But, you know, the nightclub life's very... It's not really the best environment to be in. You know, it's unsociable, especially when you're sober. Yeah, everyone's drunk. It's basically like babysitting in a way. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> basically, I'm a full-time babysitter. Like it is. Like, I've got in two older brothers and the baby and the mm. eldest one. He bounced for like 10, 15 years or something like that. Mm. And like, he's, he, you can see, like, he, when he went back, it was at the old five one that opened like a few. Yeah, like, yeah. A, he went well, and done that night there. Well, that's where you open now, the old five one. Yeah. And, and you all come to where our area where I work and, you know... Some old faces. I haven't been out of town for years, but the old five ones back open, and you know it's good to see it. You know what I mean? Mm, is to say he went back on the opening night because mm. like wherever the miners were, they're like, oh, oh lad, do you want to come back on? Do I give you some cash and I'll give you some decent money for it because we're gonna proper stack the door, but dormant. And he went. It was so different compared to like what it was. Yeah. say, how old are you? I'm 24. T- no. <laughs> Why am I getting older than everyone? I'm 24, like... feeling 34, by the way. Lads. When you when you get past 20, I feel like your back goes, your knee goes, so you know you feel it, don't you? Lads, trust me, I know all about... younger, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> trust me, lad, I know all about bad back, bad knee. But, um, so you've been mountain since about, what, 21, 22? Yeah, 21, 22. How much has that changed then in that period of time? So, you know, my personality's changed, which is the main thing. You know, I'm more like, you know, I don't socialise as much because... When you're in that environment, I want to say socialising, I mean like drinking, going out, you know, partying. I don't do that because I'm basically in that scene anyway. And I just know the dangers and all that. And even if I was to go out, I'd still be like like that looking around. Do you know mm. what I mean? Because my mind's constantly working. Mm. Do you do, know what I mean? Do you reckon though because you've been in that environment, though, like this is the way I would see if I was a bouncer. Being in that environment, you see some shit, like you deal with shit and all that. Absolutely. You, like... Yeah. That'll make you more aware to it. Does that make like your ego a little bit more? So if you did go out for like a bevy and all yeah. of your mates, like you'd be more aware of what's going on rather than having a good time. Exactly. So yeah. I'll just focus on what's going on. Yeah. Rather, like, why is he talking to him like that? Is he are they arguing there? Is it you know what's going on? Do you know what I mean? Rather than like just focusing on what's going on around me. So that that's you, it's just natural when you do something for you know a certain period of time, mm. you can't help yourself and you just go into it. So mm. they say I. Do you like ever go out then, like at all? I'd, I'd, I'd try and stay away from it. You know, you know, bad distractions, drinking, going out, women. You know, all. You know, I feel like they're just all to take you out. You know what I mean? Mm. So what, what is it that you do then? So just, just go out. You know, just, just working on the door, and you know, just, just you know, what do we do in my personal time? Do you mean? What is the life of Louis, Louis Jones? Yeah, working, gym. That's it. Is that it? <laughs> that literally it? So far, yeah. And, yeah. I, and I, will, I will go have the odd uh, the holiday on that, but mm. I try, you know, I'm not really into, like, you know, the drink. I've never really been to drinking or, you know, doing jokes or, you know, et cetera. You know? Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's massive, that, considering, like, you're 24 and you're from Liverpool. Yeah, like, yeah, lads, yeah. like, Liverpool, as everyone knows, has got a bad drug problem. It has, yeah. Proper bad, like, everyone It's only getting home. worse. It's only getting worse. Is it? Yeah, well, I'd say so. We look in town and, you know, the, the nightclub scene, it's, you know, it's it's you know everyone's everyone's doing you know this this and this and you know it's not it's not you know. Mm, I could say because like the bars that you work in, like around like the Adelphi and all that, like you said, I wouldn't imagine like any young people going there. But is it still like quite bad and all that, like the drug abuse around there? Yeah, it's it's more relaxed actually to be yeah. honest. But you know, 
it's still it's still there, isn't it? It's always going to be there, and then like, in the scene, mm. you know, even if it was like four years ago to now, you know, it's always going to be there. Yeah, so, like, so. I will, I started going out in twenty fifteen, and I haven't drank in over the, nearly eleven months. Stopped going out about two years ago, mm. and it was like the past like three to four years of that period. So let's say twenty seventeen to twenty twenty one, something like that. That's when, like, I noticed, like, there's so many people taking drugs now. Like, you go into cubicles and, like, you notice the sounds. Yeah. People walking out go, <laughs> like, when I first went to town, I thought, oh, he's going to run in nose in. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, a bit yeah. cold. And now I'm yeah, realised, like, got ah. Got COVID, got COVID. Yeah, got COVID. <laughs> 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 got COVID. COVID that before it even came out. Yeah, yeah. That man got it on pre-order. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But, um, what's it like now? Well, let's see, I feel like the, what you've came on for today, I'm yeah, not even yeah. going to talk about it because we're on this topic now. Uh, we will, don't worry. Um, what are the youth now like in town, like, like compared to what they were? Because we're getting older and our perspective yeah. changes on how we look down to the younger ones now because like generations change, mm. our opinions change, our, our mentally changed. Like what is it like now? Like you see like these 18 year old lads and birds bouncing around. Yeah, well, you know, you get the odd few. Out. Well, you get most of them out for a good time. Mm. But, um, you know, you get the odd few fighting. And, you know, they resort to, like, nowadays, in 2024, they resort, don't resort to fists. They resort to other things, weapons, you know, this, this, and this. So they'll use stuff like that. And that's the downside and the dark side of town and the nightclub scene because I've seen the worst happen, do you know what I mean, in town. And, it's it you know, it depresses you. It really does, you know what I mean? It's not, mm. it's not a nice... Thing to think about, is it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you think of these young kids stabbing each other or doing this, doing that. Mm. I just like to see you and your mates as mates meaning like fellow doormen and all that. Like what what goes to your heads and all like when you jump together on the doors. Why am I doing this? <laughs> I'm I'm literally standing there thinking, why am I doing this? Yeah. And I, I, let's be honest, I, I'm being totally honest. Like, cause at the end of the day, you don't get paid enough. And if the do- if a door lad makes a decision, it's never the right decision, is it? Because someone's always got something to say. So you can't win, can you? Do you mm. know what I mean? So you know you, you you gotta you gotta just, just you know you just make the best decision mm-hmm. you can. You know what I mean? Do you feel like you just get you just get heavily labelled still? Yeah, like, we, we do. Yeah, because yeah. if you know we're just like well, no, we're not we're not like police. But if someone's seen the bouncer doing something, they like to you know video it and say, oh, this guy's bad because he's got you know you know. Mm-hmm. But we were just not like you know you don't know what the guy done before you know he could he could have been hitting a girl and so you don't know do you so yeah so I've had that a few times like I said before mm. like my brother done it for years and like he's come back he's told me stories and, all, and mm. some of them are like really funny and he said he's gone into like a lot of scraps and that but there are times where like don't get me wrong I sure he's so sad like he's a proper good lad but there are times where it went wrong for them and like they've been labelled. Like exactly. they get told like, oh, you're just like a bunch of gorillas or whatever. And the problem is now years ago, you could do things and it would be fine. Mm. But now there's cameras and not only that, everyone is a camera because of the phones. So, mm. you know, you can't win, can you? No. How come you're still doing it then? Because it's just easy, quick cash, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just easy. I say easy, quick cash, but then, you know, when it, when it really kicks off, you're thinking... Why am I doing this? Is it worth it? Because it's, it's ne- never is worth it, is it? Do you mm. know what I mean? That, like, that's fucking true. Like, and especially like, the way that it's going now. And, like, all, all it takes, literally, and it is just one dickhead lad to either have a glass bottle in his hand or like, get an argument exactly. and he pulls out a blade. And it's like, all right, so I've either got yeah. to scrap him with all the mates or yeah. got to completely or you're back off. with him with a glass bottle and I don't get paid enough for that. Like, yeah. Why would I do that? That's just reckless. It's not, yeah. not smart at all. So that's just literally like you yeah, want yeah. to just turn up to your job and get exactly. off. Exactly. That's that, it. That, that, that's that like, literally a job at the end of the day. Yeah. To them. Having a fight with the door lads a big deal. To mm. us, it's really not because mm-hmm. it's our job. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you don't know, and you forget certain faces, and that. So you don't want to get into altercations on the doors. You try and stay away from that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's just too many people have got too many opinions, lad. I think that's mm. the only way to really say it. Too too many dicks. It's the only way I see it. Too many mm. dicks out there. But um, how did you get onto the doors? Like, that's so I knew someone in the gym. Um, so I was like, you know, my mate was like, oh, I know someone who will get you on the door. So I said, okay, so I'll, 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 I'll do it. So I, I ended up quitting my job. This is, I don't normally make a, like a, a, a um, big moves like this, but I, I just done it anyway. So I quit, quit my job. I work with BT Fiber Optics, you know, doing the uh, fiber broadband, which was all right, but it was self-employed. So I never really got anywhere with that. So I was thinking, right, I need a guaranteed in, uh, source of money. So I went into... Um, to the bouncing and I was flying ever since, you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. you know, he just got me in. I knew someone who knew someone and I was in straight away. What was it like on your first night? 
first Alton. first night it was it was it was intense because I was you know I was in the defense right away, but now I'm on, on a more relaxed side of town, so yeah. it's it's went opposite. You you know. Well, just, if you don't mind me asking, what was the first bar that you went on? McCulley's Concert Square. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a yeah. uh, that's a that's a dodgy area. Yeah, yeah. But oh, the thought of Connie Square like really gets to me, you know, just <laughs> like, hate thinking that I just spent like half of my adulthood of growing up there, you know, like from where I am right now. And um, was it always like the size that you were when you started? Because yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say it. Me going to the gym, me personally. Gives me more confidence because I'm bigger life. I can handle myself more. Doesn't mean I got around scrapping people. I yeah, feel yeah, like you I can feel confident. Yeah. yeah. Of was you like that? Like when you started, like someone said, "I've got a door job there." You feel a bit of a bigger life. Be like, yeah. well, yeah. I was do- I was doing boxing for a bit then. Um, I wasn't doing bodybuilding at that point. Um, so yeah, I was feeling confident in myself definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was bigger back then. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've always been a big lad. You know what I mean? I go out of town at eighteen. I'd never got asked for ID because I looked older. I've always looked older. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, too much. When you said you looked were older, I looked older when I was eighteen than I do now. What? Exactly. How was that work out? Well, you know, comes down to other things. Yeah. It? You know, I like the juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we brought it up then. We'll dive into we'll dive into the juice and all that. Cause yeah, I, yeah. I don't think I've ever properly 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 spoken to someone about mm. being on it and if you're so open about it i'm then, so open about it yeah it's so how old was you when you first started it uh, when i first started it i was eight i was 18 just turned 18 it could have been 17 if i remember correctly but yeah i was 18 yeah. would, would you like a tall skin, skinny lad i was i weren't always tall i was small and fat and then i went to tall and skinny and then i blew up in size at the time yeah mm. so how come you wanted to get on the juice then because I wanted to be a bodybuilder, you know, yeah. competitively. So I thought, you know what, this, this is what I want to do. And no one can tell me otherwise. And I want to do whatever it takes. Yeah. And that's the least you can you can do in my eyes anyway. Yeah. How did you find it though, like when you was actually taking it? Like So when I when I was taking the juice, um I was excited at first. Yeah, this is this is the truth. Like, I mean, I was like, Yeah, I can't wait to get on a fair cycle, gonna, you know, get strength from that. And um I got I got a bit like fluffy, the fluffy look. I, I blew up. A bit fat and stuff like that, um, yeah. And and from there, just you know, and then I cut down, and then it blew up, cut down, blew up, cut down, and that's what you do. That's what bodybuilding is. Mm-hmm. Well, when you go through, because obviously, like with us being a mental health, we always try to talk about our mentality and that. What was it like for you? Because there's a lot of no, I won't name him, but he was saying like it's the worst he's ever felt. So I'm sure he jumped on Trent. Like I'm sh- so sure it was that, and like he said his head was going. Like yeah. he'd have like proper mad nights and all that when he'll go home and he only felt all right when he was mm. in the gym actually burning proper energy. Mm. But what was it like for you? Well, when I was on the train, I was on the train at nineteen. So <gasps> yeah, so I was I was doing train train at nineteen. Uh, I even done it in the off season as well when I was when I weren't doing the show. But when I was doing that, I I got you know people say it makes you angry and that and your strength does blow up. It really does blow up. That that's that's like one of the main things I think. Uh, but the thing that I noticed was I got emotional, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I got emotional rather than angry. People say, oh, it makes you angry. But I got emotional, me, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What well, well, was like your emotions? It, was, like it was just like a woman basically up and down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just I mean? mood swings. Yeah, mood swings from here to there, from here to there. Yeah. So I, I, I couldn't really con- control my emotions correctly, do you know what I mean? Yeah. How long was you on it for? Or oh, did you show together since? Yeah, yeah. So like I stopped, I stopped it. Stop bodybuilding. That, at 19 i was on it for two years but i have abused it and that's then two years you would you like properly on it because they say taking in cycles don't they so i'm get is it I, f- I think the whole time in them two years i was off for like six weeks really yeah yeah don't, is it because because it was like an addiction standpoint i want to say addiction mm. i'll touch into this a little bit more addiction is not like i need me fix addiction is a, i need to progress that's yeah. that's the addiction mm. and that's where that's where that was my downfall because that's what you know would you say you had a healthy addiction with an unhealthy supplement? I had an unhealthy addiction with 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 because it was unhealthy, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, uh, healthy in the sense of like my mindset, I need to progress. Yeah, that's what I mean. But yeah, yeah, that's healthy, isn't it? Yeah, we all want to progress, but it was unhealthy in a way where like you know, at what cost? Mm. Do you know what I mean? That like, there's many bodybuilders nowadays. Like I can't tell you now since I stopped bodybuilding, how many bodybuilders have literally dropped dead. 25 years old, 30 years old, all dead. Is that, I mean? is that what put you off, taking well, it? Like just... I, that didn't put me off. Like, you know, it's 
what put me off is what happened to me. Uh, what did happen to you? So basically, well, well, I, so basically, I was taking all this juice, and I've I've got an underlying acne condition in my family. My my dad's had acne uh, on his back naturally for years, but you know, I I was fine. I've always had good skin at the time, anyway. And then um, when when I was taking this juice, like it must have, I took, I, I was abusing it basically. There was use and abuse in there. Mm. So I've advised anyone to do it. I'd advise you to use it rather than abuse it. Yeah. Um. So I abused it. I paid the consequences. It, it brought out this underlying acne condition inside me, like basically, and it was like the plague. It was like um, this black crusty acne formulant is called yeah, and it was. My worst nightmare, life. Really? Yeah, yeah, and and it was scarring my body. I've still got scars now, and um, I had to stop the bodybuilding at, at nineteen. I was like, oh, I don't know where to go from here. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I, I went from here to here. You know mm. what I mean? Went from looking in the mirror every day, you know, happy with myself, to never looking in the mirror again at the time. Anyway, so mm. what was harder then? Cause if you were on the train and you were like proper emotional mm. off of your times, and but you were like. That healthy addiction of wanting to progress, 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 but on un- uh, unhealthy supplements. Was it harder to stop because of it, or was it easier to stop because of what happened? Yeah. So, what what was harder to give? What the progression or to take care of yourself? At everything the time? it all just come tumbling down. Everything you know just crashed. I went from, you know, I went from being like strong and everyone saying, "Oh, you're you're gonna be good," to nothing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And, and I just lost all, you know, I lost me, me, me look of how, how I wanted to look and stuff like that. Mm. What was you like after it then? So everything stopped, what was like normal day for you then? How was you feeling? Well, I, the, the aftermath, I was in hospital for like a month, wasn't I? And then uh, after that, I started boxing and I got into my fitness and that's a whole different ball game. And mm. that's what saved me, basically. Yeah. Do you wish that... You started the boxing and the fitness side earlier, or yeah, do you? I, I, th- I wish, I wish I would have swerved the bodybuilding and started boxing straight away. Yeah, but, but you, you do think like that, don't you? But you know, it's it's all part of you. And maybe if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't be like how I am now, because I was totally bis- I'm a totally different person now than what I was when I started boxing. Because you know, I, lo- I love it. Do you know what I mean? I love training. I love going for a run. I didn't used to love to run, so I love the fitness side now. Mm-hmm. What would you like? So, who was Louis Jones before boxing, and who is Louis Jones now? Like, what's the differences? Well, it's charming, isn't it? Char- charm is what makes makes you who you are. Like, I, mean, I feel like when when you go through stuff in life, experiences in life, especially when you get older, from a young age to now, everything everything you go through has got a effect on you and makes you who you are. Mm-hmm. So that that that's that's what it boils down to. I'm you know I'm grateful that happened to me. I have no regrets. I should have regrets because everyone goes, you know, you should have regrets, but I've got no regrets and I'm, I'm grateful for the experiences I've gone through. Yeah, because I always remember, um, who was it? It was, you're onto Andy Hopkins, the, the actor, the alpha, who played like Hannibal Lecter. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not are you onto Silence that. of the Lambs, that film? Oh, well, yeah, I know him. The, yeah, 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 that's Andy Hopkins. He's yeah, fucking yeah. Welsh. Um, but there was a video where he said, do you have any regrets? And he went, no. You know, I don't have any regrets because I've got no time to regret. If I sit there and dwell on things, exactly, then life's yeah, just gonna yeah, pass yeah. me by. Exactly. Yeah. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna watch the prey go by. You wanna, you wanna be focused. You wanna, you wanna see what you know. If okay, if something goes wrong, okay, sound. Something's went wrong. I'll just take this path because there's plenty of paths, isn't it? Yeah. Know. It's one of them as well, lads. Lou, if you didn't have the underlying acne issue. Then maybe like you would still be bodybuilding. Maybe exactly. you could still be abusing the trend right now. And I would have had a heart problem instead. Yeah. Or I could be dead now. Yeah, so, like, it's so, one of them. So you... it's never know. Like you know, the, these bodybuilders are dying. Yeah, I mean? like, that is the thing. And and they they really are dying. Like like it's 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 getting bad. I feel like people nowadays and bodybuilders. I've been, I've been around the best like bodybuilders. I, I know the score. Like these people are abusing mm. abusing it. Do you know what I mean? Proper. It's not even funny. Like what you'd think. Can you just tell as well, like who's just on the juice and who isn't? Mm. Well, you know, it, it's it's it, there's a fine line somewhere. Where like, is he or isn't he? But nine times out of ten, everyone's on an auntie. Mm. I mean, that's not. the least you can do. I think. I mm. think being on the juice is, you know, is the least you can do. Yeah. You know what I mean, I want to say everyone's on it. I mean, like everyone, you know, you know, like when you see these fitness influencers and, you know, you you, you know, yeah. Th- but don't they say that athletes, I mean, not athletes, uh, actors, like they jump on the juice, don't they, if they want to bulk up and like feel like these movie Good roles film. and stuff? Yeah. I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, can I ask for people watching who don't know what juice is 
Oh yeah, we've just talked about what, it. What is juice? For people who don't know, don't well, actively go to the gym, yeah. what is it? Well, juice is like anabolic steroids, basically like um, testosterone. The, you know, the more testosterone you got, the more, the more muscle you've got. But also with the testosterone you put into your body, uh, you get other side effects such as acne, you know, stuff like that. So that that's that's what juice is basically. Yeah. If you want, I'm prepped. I'm fucking prepared for this. So you can sit off for like a minute if you want, lad. I'm not gonna lie. Anabolic um, steroid use, especially a young among young men, raise serious self concerns and they have some facts. So there's health risks for young men. Young men. And why can't I speak today, man? Oh, for young men. Um, cardiovascular issues, psychotic events, hormonal imbalances, impact on reproductive health. So if you want kids, just, no, don't be taking them, otherwise nothing's coming out your bollocks, mate. Um, and then it's all about like the definition of testosterone, muscle growth, enhanced performance, aid and recovery. So if you do want to become like an absolute wham bastard, then get on the juice, but there's, there's not a real need to. So I've always said to people, um, to be honest, it's been people that have either taken it mm. or thinking about taking it, and he went, "Why didn't you get on stage?" And like you know, like oh, like, like I'm, a, I've been taking like this or I've been taking that, and it's like I don't want to get on stage, so I've got absolutely no use to take it. Mm. Like it's just gonna fuck me up. And it's like I'm where you are, so I still do. I wouldn't say bodybuilding. I I go to the gym and I do bodybuilding training, mm. but obviously that's because I want to like grow my muscles. I want to get bigger. I want to get fitter. But it's like, I'm enjoying it because it's fitness. I'm enjoying it because it feels good for me. Yeah. It's not that I, I have to go and be the biggest guy in the room. It looks sick. Like, walking around, like, on big calves, like, being tall, mm. lads. Have you got big calves? No. Yeah, three we're tall, we don't <laughs> have big calves. We don't have it, do you? Yeah, like, it'd be decent if we had big calves, you know, like, decent abs, you know, nice big chest, big back. Like, people, you get, like, a few nice looks. Like, people go, oh, he's fucking fit him and all that. Mm. You, like, you see a bird in the gym, she goes, oh, look at him. Or the lads are like, hey, fucking massive him, but... At the end of the day, they're just like little compliments that go past. But yeah, yeah. Well, that's like, exactly what what I relate to. I mean, for for what I remember, if I if I you know it's the, it's the risk reward there. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're scrolling on Instagram and you see someone, you you think I've said this before. Oh yeah, he looks well, and you scroll past and you, you just forget about him because you're thinking about what you're gonna do next, what you're gonna have for your tea, what you if you're going out. You know what I mean? You don't think about so you know you feel like you build you build up in your mind how much people think about you. And it's not it's not the case, is it? No, mm. people don't really care. So you shouldn't really worry about what people think, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that is the I don't even understand why we're so drilled to think about what mm. other people think about us. It's yeah, like yeah. we all give a shit way too yeah, much. Yeah. And I don't get it. Because you could be walking down the street and someone looks at you. Mm. And if you're an overthinker or you're a paranoid person, you'd be like, Oh my god, like what have I got? Like, have I got something on me or whatever? Yeah, but they could yeah. be walking past going, Wow, he's fit him. Yeah. Could be something like proper good, but you're just yeah, too probably. worried. Exactly. And then, so like, I know like a lot of us can be subconscious. So I could go to the gym and I might be doing inclined dumbbell press. So lean back a little bit. And if I've had food not too long before, I've still got a bit of a bloated belly. I can mm. see my belly sticking up, so I'm trying to suck it in. Yeah, yeah. But like, no one's looking at my belly. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. It's just mad. But well, then. Well, that, that, that's what bodybuilding does. Yeah. I mean, that's why people say, oh, bodybuilding's like narcissistic. It is. I'll be honest. It really is, especially when you're extreme into it, because you're like you know you wake up in the morning, you notice you lean in the morning, and you have some food of a night. You know, as lean of a night, are you? So you know, there's a there's a eight there's a a.m. shave, an eight p.m. shave. That's two different shapes. So, so I'm like, what's going on here? But you know, you gotta realize your body all towards throughout the day. So you know, you you know. But I did say like you get obsessed with how you look a bit too much, and you can imagine how I felt when. I was doing that and I was doing the shows and I, and and then I went from doing that to looking in the mirror, scarred scars all over me. So you know it all went downhill, but you know you learn in life, don't you? Yeah. When when you were doing shows, mm. what was it like? Like the final days before a, the comp started? Because did you mm. water cut and everything like yeah, that? Yeah, you know, just just the last cards. few days. Take the take the, the, the well, the last day. Take the water. That was not not much. Um, just carve up before the show, you know, just basics. Everything was basic, and the basics work all the time. Uh, was it? What was it like for you though? Like actually going through it mentally and like physically. It was, it was like I was like a zombie to be honest. Yeah. I was like I was like like I had no energy. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it, it, it was not. It was not. The, I was like the same for me. This definitely not for me. That not for me. You know when I was doing it, still doing it though. You know, it, it, I don't not, don't know how these people do it to be honest. Okay, mm, because you look at like 
bums there and then I'm back on the day you look at Arnie they're the first two that come to my head Ronnie Coleman and like they were doing it for years mm. like cutting bulking non-stop getting on stage being the big uh, boys and you, like I've got to give gratitude to them you make to it look extent. easy because when you see a picture of someone's physique out of shape in their eyes and in shape it looks easy doesn't it like oh yeah you just worked hard but it's a lot of mental battle. It's the mental side. That's yeah. the most, that's what that's what gets you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because like with my coaching now, I try and do a lot of man and like mentality mindsets. Obviously, the physical side of it. But Jay's one of my clients, and one of the questions is, how do you feel mentally? Because if they're not feeling good, then that's where we've got to make changes. Then mm-hmm. it's whether we change food, we change how many days you're doing, we give a bit more rest time, and it's. That's, it's a whole and ba- mental battle game, like no matter what. Yeah, like you could be the mental. strongest bastard in the whole gym. Exactly. But if you're not, if you're mentally drained and you can't feel like you're gonna do it, you're not even gonna try, are you? Yeah, you're not even exactly. gonna give it a go whatsoever. But um, when where was I gonna go? So you've done everything at nineteen. You've done all your bodybuilding, and you thought this was great. You stopped. You stopped before I even started. To be honest. Like, I, I would have done well better than what I did. I could have done better than what I did. But, you know, I, I just, you know, I, you know, this and that, it was too hard. You know, I carved up too much. I made, you know, so, you know, it's, it is what it is. You know, mm. no regrets, though. Yeah, even though what, what happened was shite, do you miss it? So it's like at any point. So no, I'm, I'm happy I'm out, I'm happy I'm out of it because I feel like the fitness and the boxing, I feel 10 times better. Do you know what I mean? I feel mm. just, I feel like I can, I can be, I, I used to sit there, like I, I don't know if I can I can show I can show you, but there's there's pictures of me. I was bloated in the face like that. Nineteen, looked about forty, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I used to sit there and just get out of breath. Like, what's going on? Like, I used to get out of breath, and I'd I'd, I'd always blame something else. My anxiety, never my anxiety. It was just that I was just fucking, you know, something going on. Like, you know what I mean? Mm, did I used to get, get pains in my chest of a night. Uh, and a 19 year old do you know what I mean that's not normal is it that's not normal like, that wouldn't be normal for us at our age yeah. anyway we'll say our age lad, but I'm yeah. the eldest in the room yeah I'm not having it lad. Oh, oh, ba- yeah. back just went 26 yeah, not even gone. that much I'm 24 older. my knee's gone <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you just have a pull down me that's all you've got that's your knee yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you reckon though that so boxing was like the kind of thing that like proper helped you out then like it's People say, don't they? Once they find the type of fighter, so it's a boxing, it's a martial art, it gives you the discipline, it puts you on the straight and narrow, you find yourself a good coach or a mentor. Was that the exact same for you? That's exactly what happened. You know, I had no way out. I was in the hospital and I ended up contacting a, you know, a good mate of mine, Mark Milan, a really good boxer, quality boxer, probably one of the best at the time in the in Britain. Um, contacted him. And he, you know, he helped me through it, you know what I mean? He, 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 he taught me the ropes and, you know, it's the mental aspect, isn't it? You know, I went through it, um, joined the boxing club, Gemini ABC, and then ever since then, I've just been, you know, just going in for my fitness, loving it, enjoying it, and I'm happy in myself, mm. rather mm. than the bodybuilding, where I was just too big, couldn't move. Now I feel like I can breathe, I can, I'm, I'm more relaxed, you know what I mean? Mm. Less tense, feeling good about myself. Yeah, and I think, like, because I'll, I'll tell you about 6'4". No, it's six two, I'd say. No, let's say let's say six four. Yeah, yeah give you give you that I'll, bit more. I'll tell everyone I'm six four, but yeah. I'm six one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I always thought I was six four, six five, and in the summertime when I was working in the school, we all um, measured the kids' height on the wall, like done like one of them little things, and I done mine, but we had to take our shoes off, and I was six six, and I was like, fuck. It's good that. Yeah, but I can't bounce around sometimes, like one tens or whatever. Yeah, so that yeah. gives you a few more lads. So I could yeah. be like six seven, six eight yeah, sometimes, yeah. and like. Phew. Still yeah. get battered by like a five foot five kid or something, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> what's it? Uh, what's it like being six foot? Just in general. Yeah. Just six foot. <laughs> just, just six <laughs> foot. Yeah. yeah. Just as someone who's never going to reach that height. What's um, it like being six foot? It's good. You know, you, you feel confident. You know, but the only the only downside to being over six foot, there's two, especially like around our height. Yeah. yeah. Punch, absolute ball and no caps. Yeah, exactly. That's that's yeah. it. Like, I can sit there and can see, like, my car for or whatever, like, in a video or something. And I go, oh, that's it. It's not there. Like, you know, you could, everything else could look good. Yeah, I'm shings popping, you know, you know, quads are like this. Looking at your, your legs, like, oh, where's my calf gone? <laughs> <laughs> your calves not there. Did you get calves while you were on it? Uh, on the juice? Well, I, I, I train my calves, but, like, my calves aren't terrible. Like, but, you know, like, when, when, you, when you train your calves, it's like, 
Die just don't react for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just don't react. Uh, are you on to, like, I hope he doesn't mind me. He probably won't even watch this, but he's on to a fella called Marcel. Marcel Vormer from yeah, Train yeah, Station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. lad, yeah. his calves are the maddest thing ever. Like, they come out to, like, the shard, lad, and everything. Yeah, like he's, they... got, he's got really good genetics. Like, yeah. he's, he's got... He... I feel like with with anything in life, you've either got it or you don't. And he's one who's definitely got it. He's got really good genetics, yeah. like for one. What's most the whole family is just absolutely yeah, yeah, talented. That's it. They're all they're all talented people. Do you know what I mean? So that that that's where he's got it. You know, at the end of the day, he works hard, he trains well, and he, you know he's he's done really well. You know what I mean? Yeah, because those times I go to train station and see him, lads, and like he'd be walking around training his clients, and he's eating while he's training clients, and I'm like. Oh, be harsh with that, you know. Walk around the gym and it stinks of food because he's yeah. eating his food up, and I'm just like, yeah. no, I can't deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when you started the boxing, because you mentioned before about your heart, I don't know why I've done that. Like, oh my god, when you mentioned your heart and like your cardio, and you said you're getting out of breath at 19, boxing's fitness, lad, you've got to be fit to do that. Exactly. How hard was it to get into it? Oh, it was really hard. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to build your fitness up, and you've got to build your fitness up, and you know, you, you, you know, you just start, you know, you can build anything up, can't you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, I had to lose, I, I, I had loads of muscle, you see, so I had to lose. I'm still trying to, like, lose weight now. It's hard to lose muscle. People say, oh, it's, uh, we're going to lose muscle. It's really hard to lose muscle, you know what I mean? Is you, it? You, yeah, you'd have to, like, try to to, to, to lose the, the muscle you want to lose anyway, mm. you know, to because I don't want to be big anymore. I want to be big enough, but I don't want to be massive, do you know what I mean? So... It's hard to it's hard to lose. You you'll lose like the water weight and all that, but you, the foundation will always be there. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, because because uh, when I started the gym, I always wanted to be like big. I wanted to like be this big mm. lad, wear baggy, wear um, oversized tops, and make them look like normal tops. That yeah, kind of big. Yeah. And as time got on, I've more of the same mind as you. I want to be like that athletic look. Don't want to be massive. Don't want to be skinny. I just want to be yeah. nice in the middle. Is there any, anything too much is not good? Is it like too much tattoos ain't good? Yeah. Too much muscle ain't good. Too much tan's not good. Anything too much is not good. So that, mm. that's that's what you, you know. Even too much water is not good, lad. Yeah. Drive from the inside. Exactly. There you go. Science. You never know. Science less than this. Too much anabolic <laughs> studies ain't good either. <laughs> if you don't believe me, ask me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that, you know. Um, but how is the boxing going now? Like, do you have any ideas if you want to take a further? Yeah, I definitely want to take a further, you know what I mean? It's something I've been thinking about for quite some time now. You know, I enjoy it. I love it. And, uh, it just keeps me focused and it just keeps me out of the bad distractions, keeps me out of, um, you know, doing stuff I shouldn't do, like going out drinking. I just like to be in the zone all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What's well, like um, a normal day in the life for you then? Because like, you do sound focused and you sound mm -hmm. like a proper like man right now. Like focused, yeah. work, getting getting it all done. You wake up in the morning, what's your day like? Sorry, I need a bed. Yeah, I'll so so when I wake up in the morning, um, like I'll go to the gym. And then I go. To, I might go to the gym twice a day, only because you enjoy it, because I love it. Mm. And um, and then I'll go to work, and then I'll just go to the gym work, gym work, the other holiday here and there. Mm. And um, you know, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like I don't really get distracted with other things. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I don't really want to do stuff that wastes me time. I only want to do stuff that benefits me. Basically, it sounds a bit so selfish in a way, but I just want to, you know. Do things that benefit me in a way. Mm, I don't reckon it's selfish though, none the slightest. Because like, lad, at the end of the day, you you your own lad. You've got your own life, and you've got you've got already tried something. Yeah, it went to shit, but you've already came out of it on the better side. Mm. You're living life well better now. You've got a job that pays your bills, that pays everything. You got a sick haircut, so I know that you've got a sick barber on the side. That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paying well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little tip on the side. That's it, um, yeah. But it's like you focus, like you know what you want to do. Mm. You're determined, and like you're only gonna be 24 one more time, aren't you? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, like people say, to you, this is the oldest we've e oldest we've ever been, that's and the not. youngest we're ever gonna be again. Yeah. So um, remember that one, boys. If you ever feel like you're in a bit yeah. of a bit of a gaff, and, right and now. don't care what anyone thinks either. Always just do what do you, and and that's what you need to do, isn't it? Yeah, that because you don't want to get you don't want to get caught up in what people think. Oh, I shouldn't try this. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't attempt this because. No one, no one really cares nowadays. You know what I mean? You need to, you need to do you. Yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah, that is definitely it. Like, like what we were saying before, why do so many people just care about what others think? It's yeah. so mad. It is, and I'll, I'll be honest. I'll sit there and think, oh, does he think I'm this? Does he think I'm that? 
But like you think like, why am I thinking what he thinks? Mm. So you you need to like slap yourself in the face and go, no, it doesn't matter what people think. Because mm. I fall into the same trap as, you know, what people think about you or, you know, because it happens. I mean, we're, we're, we're only human, you know, we, we will think like that. Yeah. It's Jay, because I saw that you liked the video that I reposted, the fella that was saying about like, you shouldn't really care what people think. You, do you remember it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you remember what he said? Because you've watched him more recently than me. No. <laughs> Thanks, lad. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah. yeah. Can I ask on that, though? Obviously, you were young, you were taking the juice. Mm. There was rapid changes in your body and your strength, as you said. On the top of caring what people think, when you initially started taking that, what was going through your mindset about being in a gym set and with people watching you? You know, while you were taking that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, you well, know, that's a good question. Well, I, everyone, I, when I was ta- when I was taking it, um, I cared more than you know what people thought then than I do now because I was more younger, I was naive, etc. Um, but back then it was like, yeah, you know, you're gonna be a good bodybuilder, you're gonna be this, you're gonna be that. So I thought, yeah, sound. I'll just, I'll just, you know, keep doing what I'm doing. It's working. Force mm. it, force it was working, but obviously. You know, I pushed it too much and, you know, I didn't really, you know, there's smarter ways to do it. Let's be honest. You know, that's that's the message I've got for anyone, any young lad who's, who's out there who wants to start anabolic steroids. You know, I advise you to stay away from that and do something else. But if you really want to, then I'd say there's use and abuse, yeah, and just don't abuse it because everyone else is abusing it. And if you end up abusing these chemicals, you'll end, either end up like me or even worse, dead. Mm-hmm. So you need you need to be smart. I went smart, you know what I mean? So Do you reckon they can be used because they're always gonna get used no matter what? It's like Lemo, Cat, Charlie, like all them types of drugs. People are gonna use them. So if you say you're gonna be if you're gonna take it, because I can't not force you to not take it, mm. then be sensible. Same with the anabolic steroids now. Do you feel like you abused it because you didn't have that? Maybe that proper guidance on it? Yeah. I had proper guidance, but I thought, you know, like, I made too many mistakes. Let's be mm. honest. Made too many mistakes, you know. And when you make too many mistakes, it catches up on you. And you, you can't you can't win them all. And, you know, it didn't work out. Yeah. Do you know what? Like, I love how honest you know. I know like, it's, you've it's got to be. You've yeah. got to be. I, I, I'm, I'm out there. Like, I want to help these young. I know what it's like sitting there thinking... Looking at Chris Bumstead. Well, back then I weren't looking at him. I was looking at someone else because he, he went around. But I was looking at them and I'm like, I want to be like that. How can I get like that? And then, you know, you think, of t- first thing you would, what's the first thing you think when you look at a bodybuilder? It's, not, it's juice, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. steroids. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Like, oh, he's on the juice. He's, 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 you know. So then, obviously, as a young kid looking at that, I was thinking, right, okay, sound. I'm going to go for it. I'm, I'm going to go for it. I trained years naturally. I trained for like since I was 15, since to 17 naturally. So a few years naturally, do you know what I mean? I mm. built my foundation then. And then I jumped on it. I didn't just do it off the bat, like, you know mm. what I mean? So so I just thought, like, you know, it's not it's not it's not a good thing. No, yeah. I would I would someone use them in the proper way though. Proper way, cycling, taking PCT. Um, you know, the when I say cycling, I mean people this thing now, this there's, there's, there's things out there like Cruise and blast, or like cruise means like to take two mil consistently, and then blast to like nine mil or eight mil when you you know and that's 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 ridiculous. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like taking two mil, taking two mil a test is basically natural nowadays. Is it? But it's not. But no. it's, it is nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> but it is nowadays, and in in what these guys are, are doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's it's not it's not. Yeah, I, I feel like there's so many things that come up now as well, like mm. natural testosterone boost and all stuff like that. Like, are you on to like, what is that lion's mane? Like that. I've heard of stuff like this, yeah. Yeah, but like. I, 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 I just don't buy into it. Like, I, I, you know, at the end of the day, like, you just go to the gym, lift weights, eat well. Yeah. And that's it. I, you, you can't really, can you progress a little bit more than that? Yeah, you, you just got to do it smart, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't do it. I didn't do it smart. Like, I'd stay away from it. Yeah. I, but I if, you can, if you compete in anything competitive, you're going to have to take the juice out, yeah, let's be honest. Yeah. Because everyone else is. So why why wouldn't you? Well, mm-hmm. I'm the best natural guy. No, no one really cares, do they? Mm-hmm. But the best natural guy. Because no one knows you're natural or not nowadays. <laughs> so you, you yeah. can't, that is true, actually. You can't yeah. win, can you? Yeah. Because I am crazy. Don't take actually. <laughs> don't take it. Because <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
it's all right saying this because Craig's episode will be out by the time someone's watching this. But Craig's gonna be doing an over forties bodybuilding thing. Yeah. yeah. So you should have heard that really first. Um, but obviously you're gonna know that he's not gonna be taking the juice because he's not that type of guy. But it it shows though that you can still compete and not get on it. Yeah, yeah. It's just how big do you want to get and compete? Well, that, that, that's that's about yourself then, isn't it? If you yeah. want to if you want to compete, that's more about like improving yourself, which is great, perfect, yeah. spot on. But if you want to compete, to to like to compete against these guys to get to the top, you've got to take it. And that was what what was in my head. I wanted to get to the top. You know what I mean? So I was like, just do whatever it takes and whatever it takes. Don't care. <laughs> And I, I, I just didn't care, like. Mm. Was it was it easy to then um, get your hands on them? To get your hands on anything? Yeah, well, you know, you, 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 it's easy to get your hands on them. You know, you talk to this guy, talk to that guy. And, um, you know, some, sometimes it's real, sometimes it's not real. It's the risk you take, mm. you know what I mean? So it's just, you'll find out later. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, you know this guy, know that guy before you know what Amazon parcels on your yeah, door. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, yeah. yeah. That's it. I've, I've always... I've always wondered what I'd look like if I ever took it, but like I, I know you got to take it, but then you've also got to be on the ball with your training, with your sleeping, mm. with your eating. You st- you've got to take all that. But you said you've got to take all that to the next level then, because yeah, you're absolutely, yeah. putting yourself up there, so it has yeah, to be even more it's, intense. It's, yeah, it's not all about you. Do you mean when you're competing? Yeah, you're competing or just yeah, honest. Yeah. Just well, like, well, when you want to progress, and it's like anything, then you want to t- you always, you know, get the best out of yourself. So just take 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 everything to the next level. Mm. It's not always about juice, you know. Bodybuilding not not all about juice. To be honest, it's it's that's the least you can do. I think yeah. the most you can do is the diet, the training, the lifting heavy. You know what I mean? That that's the that's that that all plays the big factors. Mm. Uh, bodybuilding's got a bad, bad reputation now of like, oh, it's all juice, but it's not. Mm-hmm. It's not all juice because the you know, people abuse the chemicals. Yeah, that's sound. We know that. But as, at the end of the day, you got to put the work in. You, yeah. Muscle doesn't grow in trees, does it? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I wish it did. <laughs> <laughs> just come around, just see them living in a park, picking trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, yeah. But but a bit of calf. Why is the calf tree empty? That's it. <laughs> um, I asked this question on my. Fitness gonna be coaching account, manful coaching on Instagram.com. Um <laughs> like sponsored that one. by so yeah, sponsored <laughs> by <laughs> in order from worst to best, what would you say is sleep and training and nutrition? In worst to best. Okay, what I'd say, people won't agree with me. Training's first, because yeah. muscle doesn't grow on cheese. Right. You know, you can't you can't as, as I said before, you can't you can't not train and not simulate the muscle and grow muscle you've got to simulate the muscles so training's first and then diet of course because you've got to have the right nutrition and recovery it's not really in order but i'd, I'd, I'd say them two things definitely and mm. then obviously the sleeping because that's where that, that's come down to recovery so all three things is important yeah but people say diet you can have a bad diet and still grow muscle mm. to a degree, yeah, to, to a degree. Like, when i was a kid i used to just eat pure not and, and still grow muscle, but can yeah. you have a good diet and not train and grow muscle? When you put it, you've like, got to, when you put it like that, it's true, yeah. Isn't it, yeah. Okay, yeah. So you've got to, yeah. So you've got to train in it. So yeah, that's first. Yeah, because what? But, what but when it comes down to this, you get to, you've got to train in it. So yeah. that, that, that's what I think. Yeah. What did you vote on it? Well, did you put your ones? Because I, I don't like a poll, didn't I? I refrained from. Because I agree with you that sleep probably is yeah. a bigger factor, but I just don't sleep the recommended amount that he tells me to sleep for. Um, <laughs> I function off like five, six hours sleep yeah. max. So I think it's more training. Like I feel it more when I go to the gym mm. and I've trained and I'm like, yeah, that's sweet. Rather than waking up and going, that look mm. great. Do you know what I mean? I look like, great. I feel great mm. after a gym session. Waking up, I don't feel great. Do you, yeah, do you get yeah, it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, do you wake up feeling good? Like, do you wake up like feeling great? I I don't I don't feel anything when I wake up. I just feel I wake That's up. That's a bit depressing, that. Yeah, uh, I I. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I go dark now. Don't just know. Nah, I'll um. Now nah, I wake up and I think, right, you know what? I'm up now. You know, obviously, no one likes getting up in the morning, but you gotta mm. do what you gotta do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you want to say I felt alright actually when I woke up this morning, which I was surprised at. Well, well, I feel. Well, I feel like I don't know. I don't know if you're onto this, but if you sleep too much, you yeah. don't feel good. 
Nee, dus... Heb je nooit zo staat? Is het zien wat sleep je genaamd? Ja, yeah, oversleeping wat. I've said mm. this to him constantly, and it's something I watched ages ago. I don't know if it was on YouTube or TikTok, but someone said like, depending on you and your mm. your just natural well being, depends on how much sleep you actually need. So people can function off five hours sleep any more than they can't function. Like just regardless mm. if they do, and I feel like that. Like if I have seven hours sleep, like for for. Wednesday and Thursday this week, I ended up doing overnight shoots for mm. work. So then slept through the day a bit and then slept like maybe nine, nine-ish hours. And I felt awful on Thursday yeah. because I was trying to fix my sleeping pattern. But then I felt horrible on Thursday yeah. with nine hours sleep, which is a recommended amount. Or like a, people get nine hours sleep naturally. Do you know mm. what I mean? And I felt disgusting. Whereas I can wake up on five hours sleep and go, I'm like, I can function an entire yeah. day and not mm. feel a thing. Everyone's got a sweet spot, and I feel like when you lay in, like when you lay in, it's not you, 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 you can oversleep and you're overtired, and and I feel like it's worse than not sleeping at all, basically. You know what I mean? You can oversleep. Like, I've, I've, I've been in a bad way oversleeping, like, so I've noticed that myself, but yeah, because you can do it. It's like if you go for like a little, if you wake up and then go back to bed and mm. you fuck it for like 20 minutes, half an hour, you wake up and you feel like shit. Like, there, there is that thing. But going back to you, if you were saying that, like, obviously you got your nine hours, you're not used to that much sleep. So then your body is going to be, like, in a state of, like, too much deep sleep. I don't know if you... Do you record, you, you record your sleep, don't you? So you give me the hourly thing. The average, sorry. But then also, the type of life that you kind of want to live with, like, your, not your bodybuilding, but the type of training that you're doing and your food and you want to do like fat loss a lot of that does come to getting the right amount of sleep so yeah to a point five six hours can benefit someone like elon musk said i only have six hours mm. but he doesn't go and do like all this exercise he has six hours and then goes to work but you were saying i can fun- function on six hours kip and then go to work and have a good day but if you want to go have your nutrition work hard do your training and then also lose fat and try and build muscle. You're gonna need the sleep for that part as well, because that's where all the recovery happens, like you were saying before. That's that's why I say about sleep. That's why sleep's my number one. Yeah. And I love being a lazy bastard sometimes. Joe, I, yeah. I, agree. <laughs> yeah. I agree, but I think a factor that people don't take in is how you wake up. So yeah. I sleep with my blinds open. Yeah. So natural light. I wake up to natural light, whereas I know a lot of people who value sleep and still don't like they've got blackout blinds they've got this which is fine for a deeper sleep but i think if you're gonna wake up and mm. sleep is a bigger factor that you're saying getting that like natural light in as soon as you wake up will mm-hmm. will help more but people don't factor that in they just go oh i can sleep for nine hours yeah it's that like, makes well, sense well, well how are you waking up do you know what i mean like not, what is your yeah, and the alarm wakes you up that's not natural is it an alarm waking you up that's not natural is it you know mm. your, your body wants to you know obviously time in my eyes, time ain't real. Time's my mate. Well, it's 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 real around the sun, but eight o'clock and you know the way the way time just you know the way you just wake up. It's it's a big shock to the system, isn't it? So it's not mm-hmm. really, um, it's not it's not natural. There's other ways to to deal with it. Yeah, because I know like when I go kip, obviously I live in my girlfriend, so we'll share a bed. Yeah, because I'm, yeah. I'm mad like that. I share a bed with a bed. What do you two? No. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously we'll close our blinds and all that but it got to the point where I wanted to wake up to natural light yeah. she didn't so there's a compromise are you onto them loomy lights no. no so it's an alarm clock but it gradually gets brighter and brighter and it's meant to represent the sun coming up so when oh, you wake it's... up it does no sound it's just light is the science behind this lads or what is it yeah, just work like um, if you wake up to it yeah but so it's over a half an hour period mm. like this cost me a fucking one I've used the about five times I'm not having it. <laughs> um, but it gradually gets brighter over half an hour. And so say your alarm set for seven in the morning, that's when it's at its peak brightest. So it'll start at half six, mm. quick match. But it does gradually, and you do wake up to like that natural glow of like a sun. And it is quite good actually, because then when you wake up, you're already looking at light instead of like waking up yeah. in the dark or whatever. Um, but I think that's a good way to do it. And obviously if you two wake up on your tired, Sad that. <laughs> 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 nah, it's right. Yeah. You just don't wake up the morning breath. It's sad. Um, so, but obviously, you just can't do that with the light. Um, with the lights, with the natural light coming mm. in. So it's just either way, to be honest. 
I just wanted yeah. to promote that. Sponsored by Liamy. <laughs> <laughs> so related to my question, training's more important. I, well, tra- training's the most important thing. You can't grow muscle without tra- simulating the muscle. You've just yeah. got to simulate the muscle. If you're on a bad diet, it's not clever at all. But at the end of the day, when it boils down to it, you've got to lift the weights, haven't you? That is true. I think I just asked the question on the Insta a few weeks back just to spark a bit of like debates and arguments. I was a bit bored. So I thought, you know what, let's, let's see out what people say and all that and like just see, you know, if I'm what did they say? Um, I got different ones. I, I'll have to show you after this if I can find it. But people were like, it goes training, food and sleep. And then people said like sleep, training, food. It, it was actually all quite mixed, mm. to be honest. And obviously everyone's got different opinions and no one is wrong because they're all as important as each other. Mm. But um, yeah, so bonjour. Hello, me again. I've me again. got a question going back to yeah. relating into this, which with your training and like your peak taking juice, mm-hmm. your peak training before it all went down. During that time of taking it and feeling like really good, what or if you can recall, what was one of like the the darkest days that you had taken it, like the really bad days where you woke up and went, nah, this is not this is not for me anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or even if that was on the diet. So, so that was on the diet. That? that was on the diet when my carbs were low. My carbs were carb. This is this is diet. This is what diet does. Yeah, people don't realize if you're on a diet. I'm gonna say a diet. I mean extreme diet. It really messes with your emotions. On top of taking the juice you're taking, which also I find messes with my emotions when I was taking it. Um, so that's what. If you're doing that, you're me- you're messing with yourself and. And I was I was I felt like a zombie. My carbs were low, couldn't move. You know, dieted down. I looked well, but I I you know I had no sex drive. I couldn't. Uh, this was like a nineteen year old, no sex drive. You know, didn't didn't. I, I just felt like terrible. I just felt like awful. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's gonna go hand in hand as well, isn't it? Because even if you're not on it, mm. like as in not on taking the juice and you got low carbs, you already feel like you've got low energy. Like, I know there's all, like, these scientific studies now where people say, don't have carbs, but have, like, a carnivore-type diet where you can yeah. have your egg steaks, and I've got loads of energy. Um, but if for you, you were taking carbs, so your carbs are going to be low, your energy is going to be low. Then you're on the juice, that's going to be fucking up your emotions, and that, that's a cycle in itself, lad, of just mm. battling you. Exactly. Oh, man, that every day. Yeah, yeah. The that must have been rough. The, the diet's bad enough. Anyone out there who knows you've done, done an extreme diet, that's, that's terrible. Ah. So never mind everything else. Yeah, like, because I mean? like, like, when I was cutting with Kobe, we done a four-month cut, and when I got to the end of it, I wanted to carry on because I wanted to get rid of the pouch at the bottom. I wanted to get rid of that a little mm-hmm. bit. But I was goosed. Like, I was so That's done. It. I think I was on about 2,200 calories. So mm. someone our height and size, that's low. But someone like you, you can manage on that, can't you? Obviously, that's where different body types come in and stuff, but... I, I can only imagine that, and then lower carbs was my carbs weren't even that low, and then you had to train onto that or juice or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. I'd, oh my god! Like even imagining that and all mm. that, I I would have been moody. And and when you do it, it's all like for a week or two weeks, but when you do it for like six, eight, twelve week preps, it's it gets hard. It gets really hard. You're drained, especially if you work. If you work and you got a job to go to, you're doing this, you're doing that. How do people do it? I, 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 it baffles me. Yeah, that's you know one I mean? thing that I, I actually have never thought of. People still got to go to work. People go to work, you know, you know, you know, there's loads of bodybuilders who work on the doors. How do they, you know, control their emotions on an extreme diet? Like, I mean, fingers with bodybuilding, yeah. It's one of the hardest things to do. Everything is calculated. Everything is, in, is measured. Everything has to be perfect. The juice, the insulin you take, that can kill you if you take too much, you know what I mean? So, so like everything needs to be perfect. So I think it's, I think it's hard. Like, I think it's one of the hardest things because you've got to be clever. And you know, that was my downfall. I just weren't, weren't mentally, you know, I went, I went, I didn't, I made too many mistakes. I didn't do it smart enough. So mm-hmm. did, did you go through anything mentally, but it was pointing like, it was like anxiety, depression yeah anything like that yeah, all of it. but that relates to what we said before the depression and all that it, uh, the diet makes you depressed like <laughs> just the worst thing ever what? white fish just oh just but like you know you you, you know i i eat the same now but i i have like you know treats and nice things now mm-hmm. you know what i mean not too much i try and keep it clean but 
at least I can, you know, I can do that and get away with it. But when I was doing that, doing a, doing a show, I went from this to this, and you know, you just keep it strict. It's it's it was strict back then. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's that's the thing what you're saying. Like you can have treats now, like it is treating yourself, but you don't feel that guilt. Exactly. Like, you know you yeah, can yeah, have, yeah. you can sit there and just kind of maybe a box of donuts and think, yeah, I've done that, but I enjoyed it. But I'm just gonna just work now, hard now, mm. just keep my diet the same, mm. and it'll just fall back into place again. Like I, I always think to myself, the eighty twenty rule, like yeah. that's something I made up in my head. Like eighty percent, like keep your main meals clean, like your main meals, you know what I mean, and then like just eat what you eat what you want to a degree, like in, in between. Like if you want a Snickers bar or you want this, you want that. But if you're doing, if you, if your main main meals, your your foundation is strong, you can't really fail. I don't think anyway. No, you can't because yeah, yeah. I know we're, we're designed to eat natural stuff. But we're, we're made to go and hunt our food like we were. I was gonna say back in the day, like it was twenty years ago or something. Yeah, yeah. Like one thousand years ago, we humans were meant to get up mm. and go. And that's why they say, oh, you should fast in the morning because you used to wake up and go and hunt for your food. You don't wake up and have a bacon on as a caveman, do you? Kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But food's developed, on, but we've also developed probably, haven't we, exactly, as humans? that's right, yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. We, we've developed as times went on, and, you know, that's why humans are living longer now because we're all adapting. Everything adapts. Everything, Every life, form of life adapts, doesn't it? So mm-hmm. that's what's happened. Yeah, and so, like, I'm going to say it without trying and, like, I'm at and people kind of thing. People that just want to sit there and have like the carnivore diet all the time. Hats off to you. It's hard work, but you're gonna be healthy as shit. F- fair enough. But I could not be arsed with that. Like I love my health, I love my fitness, yeah. and as I get older, I'm gonna appreciate it more and more and more. Because I want to take keep, take care of myself even more so because my body's gonna start breaking down as mm. I get older. But it's to the point of I'm not gonna sit there and have like steak, eggs. Sweet potato, this actually sounds like my diet right now. Uh, <laughs> but then it's like sitting there eating dates and like just only fruit. And it's like, oh, I had a fucking apple pie as my dessert and all that. And I felt a bit cheeky having it. But I'm back on it tomorrow. It's like, nah, lad, if I want to sit there, like last week, I got paid. So I was like, yeah, scram. Scram. So I had a chippy on the Thursday, kebab on the Friday, kebab on the Saturday, Mackey's on the Sunday. Yeah, I felt a bit like shit after it for a couple mm. of days, but I fully well knew that. But I knew I was going to get back on the horse anyway and just carry on exactly. and crack on it. It's like, yeah, yeah I can yeah. eat all this shit food, but I'm enjoying mm. myself. It's like you said, mine was more like the 80 20 rule, but the opposite way around for them yeah, few yeah. days. But as long as I know what I'm doing, can't think I'm not getting I've all the I've had it where I've had like a cheap meal, right? I've had a cheap meal. This is in recent times, this. And for two days, I felt terrible. I felt like. Four stone heavier, couldn't move, felt sick. So I feel like if you if you if you don't eat much and you eat loads, that can have an effect as well. Especially when you're dieting down and about relating back to the bodybuilding. If you're doing doing nothing and then blow, blows up, sometimes your eyes are bigger than your belly. I remember going around the shoot. This is this is a. You might think I'm weird, but I I remember when I was doing the show, I was going around the supermarket just looking at the food, and imagining about eating the food. This is. It was that bad. That's how bad it was. That's, it was that bad. Do, do you know when actors? It's the fourth, the fourth. I was looking at like cake or Skittles cake. Yeah, that looks nice. Do you know what I mean? Honestly, the fourth in my head was when actors um, take like the role seriously. I, yeah. can't, I can't remember. what What's the word for it when the air? Uh, I know what you mean. Do you mean like what uh, Christian Bale does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the type of acting, but they, they, they live the how, how they're yeah. going to act. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's cold something but that's what I imagine that <laughs> that was then just walk around I want to eat that yeah, I want to yeah, eat that yeah, exactly <laughs> it, it, it has a mental effect that's not normal is it it's not normal behaviour but it's done it to me so yeah. if you try a strict diet for 12 mm-hmm. weeks if you want to feel better about it yeah. just call it window shopping lad. we've all done window <laughs> shopping before and you've just yeah, done that with a bit of food <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's skill okay it looks nice though, lad. I'm going to scram that yeah. <laughs> to be fair I did want to ask while you're on that um with all of that going on, and you said your your emotions are really high, um, mm. along with the diet causing depression, mm. and and you weren't really feeling it. How did that affect then your relationships? Then going into like work, your friends, your gym friends. How did, yeah. how did that all affect the relationships that you? So, had to- so my gym friends, it was sad. It was more like um, you know stuff with, with with my family. You know, you know, I'd get emotional more with them you know they'd be like what's wrong with you 
why are you crying? Yeah, I used to I used to break down crying in front of them, like it, it, you know about stupid things. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, it makes you emotional. The juice definitely makes me makes you emotional. Like everything, everything, every every experience I went through with that juice, like I got angry. Like I, I've been angry before, but it's, I've also been emotional as well. So it's not really an angry juice said. You can be an emotional juice said as well. So I feel like it heightens in my eyes, in my experience, it heightens any emotion you've got. Do you know what I mean? Mm, d- does that then just heighten? Would Would you say before juice, you were a more emotional kid or a more angry kids just like in general like what one came I was, ne- I was never angry more more i don't know more like i was like just a bit of both you know what i mean yeah so say because buds depending on you are bring it out more like so yeah. you were more of an emotional kid that's, that's gonna true, ever, like heighten yeah, up your emotions yeah. more yeah. then make you more it's of an like, angry it's, person it's like alcohol and then you're a yeah. nice person when you drink or you're angry when you drink do you know what i mean mm. so whatever you are is what it'll bring out it's different for everyone everyone's different so aren't people i'm intrigued now to know what i am more of so we jump on <laughs> jump yeah, on the cycle on. yeah you know a guy I'll just get back on it come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be interesting actually to see like what, what you are more of what do you reckon stay natural I'm staying right, I'm staying natural I'm stay just, natural, I just want to know what natural. he thinks I would be just as being like me boy I think if we're throwing up like if we, if we did it a couple of years ago I reckon you'd be like kind of happy and stuff, but I think with everything going on now, you'd probably be a bit more emotional. Um, no, because it was like either more emotional or more angry or more of aggy. They I, were like, I'd say you were more aggy if you were to get on it. No? Yeah. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Start just jabbing people yeah. for it. Oh, put, that, put that there. Put that on my skew. Okay, clad. <laughs> yeah. Method Acton. It was called, by the way. Method Acton. Method Acton. Yeah, like Heath Ledger. Yeah. That's what that's what he done, lads. But he got into the zone too much. Oh, lad. I can't believe you said I'm Aggie. <laughs> but I'm not, you know. <laughs> to be honest, I thought that as well. So But it's alright, Craig called me a happy guy last week. He said you're dead smiley. It must be because I'm called Lewis. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It works. It is. It is, <laughs> lad. It's so true. Um lad, to be honest, I have you got anything else that you want to ask? How long have you been running for? Because I don't want to cut this short, I'm enjoying this. An hour. An hour? Is that it? I feel like, oh, I like, I like, I don't really have much more. Like, I, I don't, I don't know what else I can really ask if I'm honest with you. That's a bit shit. Um, do you want anything you Doors, want to bring up? Training, boxing, fitness, juice more. It's just, yeah, have we covered it all? Would you say? Yeah, we, in a way, yeah. What, what, what else do you want to talk about? Us? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, talk about other things if you want go ahead what, what do you do in your spare time do you play FIFA do you play cards no no, no. Wow. are you, um, I, I, are you a I gamer like no, no. I, <laughs> I can't what? concentrate I can't sit there and concentrate on things <sighs> have you got ADHD no I've got undiagnosed I've got, I've got no no it's not ADHD I've got, I, I just can't sit there and play and, play, and sit down I just can't sit down I need to be like doing something oh, are you like too active yeah I, like, I, I need to be like doing something I, like I, I just need to be like feel like I'm doing something yeah because I, I feel like sitting down relaxing I, 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 unless I really need it I won't do it honestly actually the more that you say that now the more I relate to that like yeah, I'd love I to jump on the game I can't do I can't sit there I just can't focus on doing nothing because in my mind I'm like oh this I'm not doing nothing here do yeah because I, mean? I can be sit, sat there sit there sat, sat there with me bed and we can be watching something so we've been watching True Detective lately and I've been into it, so mm. I can sit there and proper watch it. But in the back of my mind, it's like, oh, I've got to do like stuff for the podcast, yeah, or I've got to try yeah, and think yeah. of a post. I so can put up for. Focus, it? Like, yeah, I've always feel like I've got to be ticking. Yeah, yeah. That's good though. That's good yeah. for the mental health. If you're constantly working all the time, that's really good. Like, you don't you don't want to have no worries, do you? Because mm. that's when your mind spirals. Well, it's when my mind spirals anyway. Yeah, because I feel like if I'm always doing something, I'm always on top of it. Yeah, I don't, um, I, I don't like watch telly. I don't watch TVs. Don't watch series. I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything worse than watching a full series. I don't have time for that for one and for two. I just don't think I could do it. You make Con- me feel, couldn't even concentrate. You make <laughs> me feel really bad about myself now. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> like as soon as I got home, I haven't seen my girlfriend for three days, and I was like, got home, had food, got on the couch, and I was like, right through the set, I've been waiting, I'm hunting this. <laughs> that just made me feel like like a proper ham now. Thanks, Lou. Yeah. <laughs> I thought like all the were shot together, but I go, I guess not, lads. I guess not. I guess, guess, I guess we can't. Yeah. No, I'm not having it. <laughs> so, oh, this is like, this isn't even podcast anymore. This is me just talking to you. So, well, you box, you go to work. I was thinking you're not in the gym. 
Mm. And you still go to like a normal, not a normal gym, but you still like go and do like normal exercises. That's not yeah. boxing. Well, I don't, I don't train like a bodybuilder anymore. You know, the the normal bodybuilding splits is like um, lifting weights, biceps, triceps, you know, back and biceps, stuff like that. Mm. I don't train like that. You know what I mean? I don't even lift weights. I haven't lift weights in a long time. Like I don't lift weights anymore, so I don't need to I focus more on the fitness and the the running. The, Training, the boxing, swallowing, so mm. all stuff like that. So, you, so what you were saying before about the change is the most important part, but you need to be able to get that muscle stimulus. Mm. You're still in shape. I can see your biceps. I can see the vein. I can see the pecs. Well, done, lad. That's lad. Yeah. Um, so how do you keep all that going then when you're doing boxing? So when you're doing boxing, I've noticed this. When I, I've noticed this. Like I've, I feel like I've gained muscle since I've been doing boxing, which sounds weird, but ever since I've, I've been like you know training. That works your muscles as well, isn't it? Like, it, it does. Yeah. Like, let's be honest. So, you know, obviously, if I've got muscle memory so from from the bodybuilding days, um, that's gonna bring that out. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that, that's fair enough. Cause I was looking on because like I've seen like where you put like pictures up in your Insta and like you've been training. I thought, fucking hell, like you're still in proper shape. And now mm. that you're saying that you don't do like the traditional bodybuilding weight training anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That like proper baffled me then for a split second. I was like, how the fuck are you in better shape than me then? Yeah, no, because <laughs> I, I come from like the bodybuilding background. So when you stop all that, right? When you stop all that, you've got to find, you're always going to have the foundation. The yeah. foundation. I was ne- I never had good genetics like as a, as a kid. Like I, I was always the fat one or like the skinny one. Like how that, I didn't really have good genetics. Like, so you just got to work around that. Yeah. I feel like gen- the genetic excuse is not really the bad. When it comes to carbs, that's a different story, of course. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but um, the genetic, you know, you, you, you can get the most out of yourself, like, you know what yeah. I mean? But as bodybuilding goes, yeah, there is genetic, like, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, so, 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 I, I, don't, to uh, I don't think I've got, would you say I've got genetics from my dog? Yeah, so I wouldn't say that either, so I'm just going to have to work hard. I might start going boxing. It's good. You, no. you, you know, you got the high for it. You know. Lad, I can't run. Lad, I can't. Like, my knees just don't let me run anymore. They, they really don't. Uh, yeah. yeah just... the, you've seen David Goggins, haven't you, and his knee? No, oh, lads. I've read, Funny, the, I've got his first book there and his second book there. I'm not going to lie, the sick books, yeah, if you've yeah. never read them before. But, lad, he's just, he's something else. Like, he was running, but, like, cartilage out of his knees, gone. And uh, he shit himself and he's pissed himself and he's still running. Mm. And all that, like, his, his feet are all ripped up. Uh, and I'm just like, I feel mate. like that's like the supreme mentality that you know. I feel like he can overcome anything mentally. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I wonder. Mentally. I wonder what he's gonna be like when he's older. Then, like, what is his body gonna be like? Well, that relates back to actually Ronnie Coleman. You know, you, you know yeah, his story, yeah. don't you? Like, uh, I don't know why he's in a wheelchair, Ronnie Coleman. What, 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 why is that? Like, has he pushed his body that much? Has he done too much? What's happened? I actually don't know. I like trying to have a quick Google, but. Ronnie Coleman is always one of them. You thought he was just going to be like super fit as like as long as he can go. Yeah, yeah. Like, he is Mr. Yeah. Mr. one of the greatest Mr. Olympias. Yeah. And he can't even walk. That's that's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. I know yeah. he's given it as all. But... Yeah. So he's only 58. And it was due to multiple surgeries and other procedures. And he lost most of his mobility and now in a wheelchair. In 96, he had a brutal squat and routine that led him to a dislocated, um, dislocated disc. And he didn't seek medical attention immediately, which changed his life. So he just carried on training, and that's just absolutely fucked him up. Yeah, that's what I mean. You gotta be smart. I mean, mm. health is wealth, and 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 that's yeah. that that is the most important thing. At the end of the day, why do we go? We want to go to feel good about ourselves, mostly, don't we? Mm. And and be healthy, and you know. Do you if bodybuilding ex- competitions didn't exist? The world of the gym would be completely different. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, because not everyone's a bodybuilder in there, so the majority of bodybuilders to people going in there to get fit is different, but I wonder what it would actually be like if bodybuilding competitions were just, nah, just not a thing. I feel like if if, if, if it weren't a thing, it, it, it's not it's not really normal, is it? Let's be honest. Think about it logically. It's it's not really normal, is it? No, it's but not. You, you, I feel like the champion's chosen... I, like you know, like yeah, when you look at the bodybuilding stage, to me they all look amazing, and you can tell like yeah, he's got striations and and all that. But at the end of the day, it's just it's not normal, is it? Because no. <laughs> like like you said, lad, you look at someone and they're that wide that they they weren't born like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like obviously working out bodybuilding, it's all it's all a normal thing because we are mm. working our bodies to try and increase the strength, the cardiovascular system, whatever it is. 
But to that extent, no, that's, it's it's mm. not normal. It's it's unnatural, and that's why obviously people say you're nasty or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that would actually be interesting not to see if bodybuilding was a thing. Do you think the rock's natural or not? Nah, what is he? Is he sixty now? Is the rock? The rock can't be sixty. How old? How old? I think he's about fifty to me. I think he's late, late, uh, oh, well, go on. 51. Oh, 51 he is. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't reckon he is. He's like, his, his neck is too big. Like, he's got the world's fattest neck, lad. Like, it's just all yeah, yeah. one shape going on. So don't you say, if you know someone's not natural, it's the traps. Yeah. If well, got I them. had no traps. I never did have traps. That was my worst thing. And was I was it? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, no, I don't reckon. Yeah. I don't reckon he's natural. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I, I think he's into... I feel like he's got an even better shape than the other he's got. Who else? Nasty or not? Who else? Who's the thing? Sebum. Oh, he's definitely not Nasty. Um, I don't know. Have you got anyone? You're tired now, aren't you? No. No? Oh, okay. Um, I, I don't even know the world of bodybuilding. It's not even the world of bodybuilding. Hmm. Yeah, Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth? I don't know. Could be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have, like, that. Bro, so so are you onto that TV show Reacher? It's, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Are you onto it? Yeah. yeah so the TV show yeah. with Alan Rich, Rich, Richmond, he said they had to gain thirty pounds, so like just under or over fifteen kg of muscle in so many months. And he said he never took anything, and he said he had low testosterone. Well, if, if he never trained, if he never trained in his life, and he's done it, then that's not quite understandable. Yeah, no, he, he was um. He was training for years and years before that, but he had to blow up then to be mm. make that size for the role. He was always mm. like athletic mm. type build, not massive bodybuilder build. So, oh no, Christian Bale. Do you think he's an natural? I'd, yeah, I'd well, say, yeah, I'd say, I'd say but, that's a natural look. I'd say, yeah, because yeah. he's not massive and all that, and he looks like he, he can looks be well though, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. You got any actors? Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. I think he's just a. I reckon he's natural, me. Yeah, he's just. I reckon he's just that size because you just come across mm. lads, don't you? You're just big. I reckon he is just that. The only one I could think of is Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. He is my man crush, I'm not going to lie. Only because he's got a machine hairline like me. Blended, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't tell that. Yeah. Doing well, yeah. Uh, that, lads. Me barber, do I yeah. give him a tip? Pick the ass off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cavill, I reckon Cavill's natural. Yeah, I reckon he's just trained for years and he's just had a good diet. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything bad about him. <laughs> I might have a mandate with him one day, you know, lad. You never know. Yeah, I never know, lad. Um, but yeah, that is... And they're always going to be around, uh, the anabolic steroids. And it's like, if you're Louis from Liverpool, or if you're Henry Cavill from London, or if you're Vin Diesel from... I mean, not Vin Diesel, if you're The Rock from Hawaii, you know, mm. you're going to be able to get your hands on them no matter where you're at. It's yeah. just... Use and abuse, and if you're doing it, I advise you not to... If you're doing it, do it smart. Just don't do it though. Do you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, that's what, that's what I'd say. Because, like I said before, you can't force someone to not take them. Yeah, you yeah. can only give them as much advice as you can. But if I could help one guy, like just one guy, you know, I've I've, I've done it, haven't I? Well, you've helped me. You've yeah. definitely made my mind up. I was probably like ninety nine percent never gonna. Do I'm it. lucky, you know. Like at the end of the day, like it could have been worse. Could have uh, all these scars all over my face. Could have really put me in a bad way. Could have had a heart attack and died. Like you know. So you got to look, look on back, like, I, I could have really come out of bad side of this, but I didn't, mm. and I don't feel good about myself, so I'm, I'm lucky. Yeah, because you're at a point, lads, where you... I need to tell a story. Yeah, you're at a point where you you seem good in a, mentally, mm. you're focused, and I feel like if you walked into any bar as a doorman or as a lad or any gym, all the bears would go, fucking hell, fucking fucking hell, fucking hell, fucking hell, yeah, so yeah, you I feel like... stay in jail, haven't you? Yeah, like, <laughs> Bro, lad, I reckon you're in, you're in a good place, and I feel like today's been a good one. I wish it was a bit longer, I do, but I don't want to just drag it out either, because yeah, yeah, then that fine, defeats yeah. the purpose then of yeah, why we're yeah. doing it. But uh, have you got any questions? Have you got anything that you want to bring up, or anything you want to ask us? Uh, ask you? Uh, it can be any. It can be related or just not related. It can be whatever. Uh, you're into bodybuilding than that, or? I was one of. Once I started getting rid of all my body fat and all that, so mm. started the gym April 21, got to August 21, I was like dead lean. 
Well, I, I snapped my knee in September 21. What'd you do? I snapped my patella tendon playing footy. Oh, I had patella tendonitis, you heard of that? No. Patella tendonitis is constant pounding. Colby had that, yeah. Um, constant pounding. He, he helped me in a way. Because he used to, used to send me things. But it's constant pounding, chaining. And you couldn't leave your knee bent for ages. I, I, had, I had an injection, operation, shockwave therapy. And I've still got a little bit now, but it's fine. I can ah. train properly now, like... I feel like I might have that thing because there's times I know it'll be after footy and it's the constant pounding of the boot on the surface and because it's, it's artificial grass it's going to make it worse but there's times when it's after footy normally where like my knee can stiff up when I'm driving yeah exactly and I, and I can proper, to me yeah, yeah, yeah I can proper feel and that I have to stretch it out so I have to, I have to go like that stretch yeah. it out yeah yeah it's like trying to make sure yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah, the accelerator yeah. as I'm trying to put my yeah, leg yeah, over yeah, it yeah. I'm trying to like Exactly, build up yeah. speed so when you leave when you leave how do you do that to your knee by the way like, so i started schooling in like oh, that was embarrassing so school in an autistic school i was there for a week so done monday to friday fine and then it was the second monday mm. playing footy on the yard with the kids and when the kids had the ball and obviously like trying to join in and all that trying to get to know them all make them laugh blah blah make them basically like me so they feel comfortable one of the lads at the ball and as I jogged over, tried to like jump and like land in front of him. I mean, he just went and I literally heard the mm. and I was like, oh, I was like, I feel like I've dislocated my knee. Yeah. So one of the teachers looked at me, Gemma. She was like, You okay? I was like, yeah. like, no, I'm not all right. Mm. So I went down, but I didn't know what I'd done. But it was lucky we had a woman who was a paramedic, but she worked in the school as well as the mm. IT. And she came over and she was like, Oh, what's up and all that? She was a fucking piss take lad. She was so funny, but she was a piss take. She was like, Yeah, you've um, you've snapped your tendon, you know, buddy. And I was like, eh. and she was like, Yeah, I, I feel like it's a it's a tendon that that's that just gone. Jesus. And um, it turned out she was right. But I had to get taken out of the school in a wheelchair. Mm. And the woman had to hold me leg up. So I'll I do it this side. So in the chair, and the woman had to hold me leg like mm. that, because I couldn't bend it. And she had to keep it like that and walk in front of me. Um, got taken to the hospital in a minibus. Mm. Um, got to the Royal and the fellow was there and he could literally, so I can, I can just describe it. So you've got your knee, then you've got like a little gap here and then that's where like everything else connects. I don't know the actual autonomy of it, but basically this came apart and I could literally just push down between my knee and like that part where it snapped. So there was not, there was no connection. That. Yeah, it was like proper. So I'll show you pictures and videos that after it. Um, but there was not on there at mm. all. And like I said, because there was no connection, it was all like just floating. So if my leg was straight, it was fine because mm. nothing. But as soon as I tried to bend, that's where the pain came. So if I kept it fine, but I could literally just push down on my knee in the middle of it, and there was not on oh, there. God. Oh, that was scatty. Um, it's a fine now, like. The surgeon knee lad is absolutely sad, uh, but my right knee is absolutely goosed. Can you squat on that? I've, I can get a deep squat. Like, I've got really good, like, flexibility and mobility, but if you want to start adding weight mm. to it, like, decent weight, I'm not the best. Yeah. So I've I've stripped it all right back now, like, since, especially since I've started training by myself and then started just focusing more on, like, the deep stretch now of, like, my training instead of just thinking mm. about weight. But um, yeah, if you want me to go down, I can easily get down. But if I want to get up, I do have to give it a bit of... Yeah. No, I, I, it's so annoying, lad, but it is what it is. And I, um, but to answer your question, I was into it. Yeah. And then I got to the point where I was just like, no, I just want to be healthy. Yeah, I want to be a, athletic. I that's just the best way. Yeah. Go, you, you'll win nine times out of ten mentally. And yourself, you feel better about yourself if you feel like that. So. Yeah. It's just... Uh, just well, no, I want to feel good when I play with my kids, if I have kids when I'm older, kind of yeah. thing. I don't want to be like a Ronnie Coleman of 58 yes. and be in a wheelchair. But there is times where I do do heavy sets and I'm like, lightweight, baby! <laughs> That's it, yeah. yeah. yeah um, I, have you thought of anything? Nah, I, I haven't thought of anything else, lad. But, lad, Lou, you've been fucking bosh, mate. Yeah, like, seriously, lad, it's been a really good it, podcast yeah. and... I believe that you've probably done a hundred of these and you only told us this is your third. Because you were like, <laughs> you're so comfortable and I love it. But um, I'd say, say thanks for coming on yeah, today. I appreciate uh, that, always. The message that you've sent out is strong, you know, strong, yeah, open yeah. and honest. I, and just want, I just want people to realise that these substances aren't there to be abused and it's the real deal. You mm. know, don't mess with your health. Health's first. Health comes first. You know what I mean? Mm. Just realise that. Yeah, You'll be that, fine. That is true, lads. It's better to be healthy and then be a big boy. Mm. That's the one way. But um, Jay, let's bang that off and then we'll do our stuff a bit later.
tuned. Well done, lads. Yeah, so that was Lewis's episode today, and that was... It was really good. It actually was really, really good. It was really insightful, especially for how much Lewis knew, especially for only being 24, and for what that lad has overcome. He's um, he's, he's a bit of a role model, to say the least, to the younger generation, I would say. He's, he was a good lad. He spoke well. Good laugh. And, um, yeah, I hope that... If you did watch this or listen to this and you are in the gym and you are thinking about competing or just bodybuilding or you do just want to get bigger, take into consideration about what he said today and the conversations that we did have. They could literally save your life. So be careful out there. Stay safe. And if you know anyone that's going to be maybe going down that route or they on that road, help them out. Put them on straight and narrow. Or point them towards this podcast. Tell them to subscribe. Uh, but we will see you in the next episode and uh, thank you very much. Peace out. Now you can click it.